Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to yet another panel for the day. It's been a busy, busy afternoon, but uh, this is and busy for Felix as well, because this is Felix's third panel in a row with uh, another Ryan, Ryan Sook. So this is this Ryan. It's a pleasure to have you on. And I can't tell you how thrilled I am to, to get get the chance to see you again. I've only I've only we probably you probably don't remember, but probably the last time I got to see you was about 10 years ago at a con. So it's been a very, very long time. But thank you for being on the show today. Sure. Yeah. No, I'm glad to be here. It's it's a, it's a thrill. I'm glad. Well, it's a it's a it's a thrill for me, and I'm I'm sure a thrill for everybody out here as well. Felix, again, you know, I thank you at the start and end of all these things, but uh, without your support, the shows wouldn't be half as fun. I really really appreciate the fact that you're able to do that. And hey, I just see uh, our other uh, moderator for this panel has just popped in, Lambert. Hey, Lambert. Hi, Lambert. Hey, hey pal. All right, guys, listen, I'm going to back out of here until we get to the end of the show when uh, I'll come back in and we'll work out the uh, the sketch opportunities. But but have a great panel and I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, Bill. Hey, hey, Ryan, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, hey, Lambo, thanks for thanks for coming on, man. Uh, actually, uh, I, hey guys. I uh, wanted Lambert to come on for a couple of reasons. Which I'll get you in a sec. But first off, <clears throat> Ryan, I, uh, I let off the. Uh, uh, the other two Ryan panels with sort of the same greetings. So uh, I just want to wish you a happy anniversary. This is our second year of working together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Happy anniversary. It's been a great uh, collaboration so far, as far as I'm concerned. It was in uh, November 2019 when I uh, when I got a call from you. And like I said in an earlier panel, you know, whenever I hear from an artist, like the first guy I talked to is Lambert. And uh, Lambert was uh, was just super excited, you know. Um, <laughs> and it was fitting because Lambert was the guy who introduced me to your art uh, all those years ago. Uh, you know, Lambert, uh, long time, 30 plus year art collector um, with incredible taste. So if he wants to uh, introduce me to a guy, I listen. And, you know, I'm not, <clears throat> never been a huge big two guy or a, you know, superhero guy. So there are a lot of artists I'm not totally familiar with. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, so while I was aware of the name Ryan Sook, um, you know, I, had, I hadn't been exposed to a lot of your work. And Lambert was the one who told me, hey, you got to you know, check this guy out. Like he, he doesn't have, he doesn't have a huge name, but he's absolutely uh, uh, underrated and in, in his opinion, underappreciated. And you know, show me his art, and and uh, that was it. You know, um, so you know, super excited that you you joined us. So it's kind of come full circle with uh, with Lambert here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Lambert. <laughs> thanks for the intro to Felix that uh, via <laughs> collection and everything. Yeah, I also needed a co-moderator. Oh, don't hold it against me. That's all I have to say. <laughs> I, I wanted a co-moderator for this last panel because I've, I've just done two back to back, and I know I'm going to need a pee break at some point. So <laughs> have have uh, have have Lambert help out. Um, uh, but yeah, you know when I did these panels for for Bill, I wanted to get guys, especially who don't do a lot of appearances, you know, don't do a lot of panels and, and don't do much online. Like you know, you have a you're on social media, but it's kind of a limited presence. And, uh, you know, guys like you are, are real gets, you know, so for for the audience, for collectors to get a chance to uh, to, to to meet and hear from and uh, ask their questions, interact with. So, yeah, very excited to get you. So it was basically you and Ryan Otley were uh, the two, you know, two guys. Two panels. Since I got two Ryans. Might as well make it three. Uh, that's why we you know brought the Ryan Stegman, too. So I got all three Ryans, uh, in my opinion, the three. Uh, Three best Ryans in, uh, in comic art. <laughs> yeah, those guys are great. I'm sure their panels went well because they're uh, they're both fantastic. It's kind of cool to be. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd say hard to follow them up, but you know, it's 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 good to be with a good company anyway. Um, yeah, those so, guys are awesome. So um, yeah, like I said, Lambert uh, introduced me to your art. Um, and as we go later on in the show, uh, we're going to go over some pieces of yours that we have from our collection just to <clears throat> show the audience. But uh, I also have some art here that you uh, sent me recently 
that uh, we'll get a chance to look at too. Very exciting. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, let's uh, let's talk about uh, your your career. Uh, you know, you've, you've you've been at this a while. When did you get started? I have. It's uh, December. Well, next month it'd be 26 years, which is like mind blowing to me. But my first uh, my my first professional job was 1990. Well, I guess my I, 97, I think it was, and uh, <clears throat> 97, 96, and I was I was doing a fill-in for the the great John Paul Leon. That was my first gig. It was uh, Challenge of the Unknown, and those were huge shoes to fill, you know. And uh, but that's how it started. And you know, he he had only been I think he had only gotten started a couple of years before I did. And by the time he was doing Challengers of the Unknown, I, I, I was already incredibly intimidated. <laughs> but uh, what, a, what a great place to start. So, yeah, yeah, 20, 26 years. Um, and that was a cool uh, – that was a really cool first gig. I got to work with Bill Reinhold, the great anchor, Bill Reinhold, on that job who he taught me a lot uh, just working with him. And I, as a young guy, you know, I was I – was, I had never collaborated with another professional on anything in any way. So getting, you know, that was at a time when the boards were still lettered right on the boards and, uh, you know, hand lettered. And I think we had, um, I think it was Ken Lopez lettered those pages, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Bill Reinhold inked it. And uh, uh, anyway, yeah, it was cool. seems like forever ago now. But... uh, it was, a, it was a very cool gig. I still love looking back at those back issues from John Paul's uh, work on the series. It was incredibly inspiring, as his work always is, still is, you know. Yeah. yeah. One thing um, Lambert, you know, sort of clued me in on is, um, you know, you were kind of an art chameleon. You know, you could work in a lot of different styles. And, um, you know, there, I think especially early on, some of the influences were, were pretty obvious. You know, you, uh, there was sort of like, uh, like an Adam Hughes kind of phase. And, uh, and there was a, like a Mike Mignola where you're you know, a lot of blacks, um, kind of, uh, you know, a little Kevin Nolan style. Oh yeah. Those are my favorite guys. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. But in the, I think in the last, uh, 10, years, 15 years, you sort of settled into your own Ryan Sook style too. And I, th- it reminds me a lot of uh, Stuart Eminem, hmm. you know, and like, you know, like Stuart, you, know, you can do all kinds of different styles and, and really all mediums too, like, you know, painting, which, which we'll talk about later. Um, and you do them all well, uh, you know, how did you sort of settle though on this current style of say the last 10 years or so? Well, I, you know, I, I don't even know if I have settled to be honest with you. I still look at a lot of the stuff that I do and I've, I've been doing this for 26 years. I was talking to somebody recently and I said, I, you know, I feel like I still haven't really made my mark yet in the industry. <laughs> um, I feel like uh, that there's still so much, potential that I haven't tapped into yet just doing comics you know but um, yeah obviously I think early on when I first started when I got that job you know doing challenges the unknown I I wasn't ready yet I've been I I think uh, how how can I say this it's so it's like I've been I've kind of grown up with an audience my my work has kind of grown up in front of an audience I was definitely working before I was ready to be working and uh, discovered a lot, but I but I had a lot of good help along the way to get to work with, um, like I was saying, you know, a guy like Bill Reinhold early on, and also very early on got to work with Mike Mignola, who was especially at that time the biggest influence on my work, um, and have not only his um, input, but his his uh, or his influence, but his input. You know, we we were. Uh, communicating a lot in those early days. And he taught me a lot about how to draw comics because I think I had a talent for drawing, but until you get a script in your hand from a publisher that says, this is what we need and we need it in a month, then, uh, you know, (laughs) then um, everything changes from there. (laughs) And it became a totally different experience. 
you know, prior to that doing pages of whatever I wanted to or pinups or splashes or something like that. But uh, yeah, when I got that first script, it was like, welcome to the show and, and uh, you better keep up. And, um, but I had good on the way. John Arcudi, who I also worked with very early on. He's a great writer and craftsman of comics as well as a historian of comics. And he introduced me to a lot of things and taught me a lot of stuff. And, and uh, I think it's helped me develop over the years. So in those early days, I think I got work because Mike was a popular guy. And I was, I was like Lambert said, uh, able to sort of chameleon certain styles and stuff. And I understood his style, his approach to how he would construct uh, certain things and draw things and how he used shadows and light to, to inform uh, the storytelling on the page. And, and it was, I think it was sheer luck because he was popular at the time and I could sort of mimic him uh, moderately well, well enough to get work because people wanted to see more of work like that. So that, that was a, a stroke of luck, I would say. But, but I knew um, even then that it, it was, it was the easy part for me was I was, I was uh, benefiting from all of the problems he had solved in his work. I wasn't solving any problems for myself. He had solved all these problems for me and I sort of just applied those things to the work and I had to grow somewhere. I sort of had to almost abandon that. In fact, I, I, I set aside all of my Mike Mignola comics and everything just totally tucked them away and I, I didn't look at them anymore because they have such, they still do have such a huge influence on me because it's such, such great work, you know, but I had to set that stuff aside and just draw. And, and that was the, really the opportunity to, to grow. Hey, Lambo, you know, uh, free to cut in any time. Yeah. Okay, well, I actually have a, I have a cover that he did during this period. Okay. Uh, see it? Yeah, let's see it. Here. Let's see how it goes. Ah, uh, yeah, the Spectre number three. Oops. Is that number three? Spectre number three. Yeah. Yep. I remember drawing that. That's one of my. That was one of my favorite covers from the from the series. Um, I really like. I, I still. It's funny to look at it now because it's been so long. But I, I had a good time. Yeah. When that book. When when I finished that cover and it came out on the on the book, Lambert. That was probably the first one that. Even I had been working for a couple of years, but that was the first cover that I thought. If I was 11 years old and walked into 7-Eleven and saw that comic on the spinner rack, I probably would have got it because I liked it. Felt like that kind of a cover to me, you know. I probably would have picked it up when I was a kid. So, <laughs> well, I would say uh, I would have been the only one I got this cover. Trust me, I don't do so. <laughs> hey, Larry, sorry, you're, you're, you're thinking sorry. when when you. I'm coming. Yeah, you're, you're, you're it's not coming yeah. well. I can, can you hear me. Yeah, it, I, I had connection problems before. I had to log yeah. out. Um, can you hear me now? Your audio, your audio is good. Your video is a little shaky. That's all. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, it, it was really interesting for me when when you first started out that I thought, wow, this this guy's really great, and uh, he's doing Mignola, but he seems to be doing it in his own way because at the time there were about, I think there were one or two, there were at least two other people I could think of who, who were also drawing in Mike's style and they were, they were good, but I thought there was something different with what you were doing at the time. I had no idea who you were uh, beyond what was on the shelves. So I think uh, this cover is a great example of uh, how you kind of just stepped into that um, space artistically and you're able to just do it as if uh, Mike did it. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, no, I, I really, uh, I like, I, I, like I said, I learned a lot from that book. It was, I was introduced mainly to Mike's work uh, through uh, one of my best friends um, and a guy who introduced me to a lot of stuff in comics because when I was young, like I said, you know, if I was on the spinner rack at, when I was 11, I, I, that's where I was collecting or at the flea market in the 25 cent long boxes and stuff. Um, when I was a kid, that's where I was getting everything. There was only one comic shop anywhere near me and it was too expensive for me to buy stuff at cover price. We were 
didn't have money in it. But uh, the first book I ever bought was Art Adams' Classic X-Men number one because of the cover, strictly because of the cover. That image still, I mean, I still think about that image. If I, if I think of a classic, iconic superhero team cover, that's, if not the first image to come to mind, it's one of them. And um, it made a huge impact on me. But, you know, so I, I was looking at all of that stuff, but I wasn't a fan of Mignola's stuff when I was young. When he was working in the the 80s and stuff, I didn't really, I, I like, I didn't care for Cosmic Odyssey when I was young. I didn't like uh, some of the earlier stuff that he had done, even like the Superman issues and stuff that he did. I didn't understand it yet. And, um I was more interested in like Neil Adams and uh, those guys, but even more than them, probably Frazetta and uh, all of the studio artists, Jeff Jones and Wrightson and, and all those great artists and stuff. They had a way bigger influence on me, probably more Frazetta than anybody else had a way bigger influence on me than anybody. Dave Stevens, I also always loved and um, Wrightson, all those really brushy, gloriously buttery kind of line work and stuff like that. So my stuff seemed always a little clunky to me, really, when I was kid. When I was a kid, so did Kirby. I, I didn't really care for Kirby when I was a kid. When I got into high school, I got back into comics because of my girlfriend and another friend of mine, and his name's Tim Goodyear, and he introduced me to Mignola's stuff. And when I saw Dracula, then all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay. I mean, now I now I. I get it. You know, now I look back at the earlier work and I see, oh, got all the potential that was in there that he had done that I just didn't understand what he was doing at the time. Uh, but it developed, obviously, his work developed, too, and, and grew into that. And, and by the time I saw Dracula and then Seed of Destruction and the stuff he was doing in the, the early 90s, I was just I, I ate it up. You know, I couldn't get enough. And and it, and something clicked. So a lot of my drawing structure, though, was still founded in all of those other guys, you know, like Frazetta and uh, Wrightson. It was a totally different um, approach to drawing. And so that's why there's, you know, there was a lot of growth going on at the time. You know, so is that, you know, when you create a cover, it's sort of with that criteria. It's got the, got the you know, knock the socks off 13-year-old. You, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. If, if I ever come up with a cover that I think I would have got as a kid, that's the successful cover that I've done. And, and they're not all, uh, I don't know if my childhood self would agree that with, with all of them, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, some of them. And that one that, that Lambert just shared that you have in your collection, it's pretty cool to see that someone has that. It's, it's sort of mind boggling. You know, I, I remember drawing that picture. And uh, and I actually did a color guide for it in Photoshop. It was one of the first things I had ever done in Photoshop. I, I learned Photoshop probably the year that I drew that. I started learning Photoshop, I should say. I'm still learning it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, and so uh, to have Superman and Batman and the Spectre on a cover, that was probably my second year of working professionally in comics, the third, second or third year. So that was like, yeah. Not only would the 11-year-old in me have bought it, but the 11-year-old that was in me at the time was like giddy and just, you know, coming unglued because the chance to do that for the cover of a book was, it's still pretty cool to me, you know? <laughs> it's a privilege. Well, it seems like you are mostly known as a cover artist, you know, in terms of your career, than uh, interior work, sequential uh, stuff. Uh, you know, was that, is that sort of by design is that intentional you know the first eight i think first eight years of comics almost all i did was interiors i didn't do any i, I hardly did covers except for the specter um, and i was drawing the interiors on the book as well um i usually did couldn't get cover work and i was mostly doing interiors for those first eight years and i found myself sort of d disappointed a lot of times because i felt like there was something i wasn't achieving in the in the work and and one of the last of those jobs that was you know interiors i did a book called um, arkham asylum living hell with dan slot and dan slot's a great writer and uh, he's doing stuff for marvel and stuff it was my only chance to work with him we and i think it possibly his only uh 
big project at DC. I think he went to Marvel right after that uh, to, to go on to do great Spider-Man and stuff and things. But anyway, we did that project and he, he challenged me to draw things that I couldn't look at Mignola to, to solve the problems. You know, he was asking me to draw things that I never had seen Mike draw or draw, draw them in ways that, that uh, were specifically not in my comfort zone. So I, I actually, on that series, I drew the first uh, two issues entirely, penciled them, sent them off to the letterer, and then I was drawing the third issue, which was a complete departure. It was really cartoony, and we created a new character called Humpty Dumpty, and we did all this different stuff. And in the course of having to draw the way that Dan was asking me to, which was kind of in a more cartoonish, fairyland style, uh, I discovered that I needed to learn how to draw, to how to draw <laughs> in order to do this. I'm learning on the boards, you know. But I, by the end of drawing the third issue of that series, I was so excited now about drawing again that I went back to the, when the first two issues came back, they were fully lettered on the boards. I erased the pencils on all of them and redrew them, the pages with the balloons on them, on a couple of them, so much so that I had to literally cut out the balloons off the page and tape them to another, a new uh, board and draw new pages. And it set me back by about a month and my editor was not happy, but when the pages came in, he was very happy. I think he was very happily surprised and so was I. If I could show you the comparison, I would, but it was astonishing the, the difference that it made. So I, I credit Dan Slot a lot for challenging me so much that it, it brought me into some, some real growth. But it also brought me to a point where I thought that interiors, if I really wanted to draw something that I was proud of and put out something that as a kid I would have liked to buy, I wanted to spend the time that it took to do that. And I wasn't going to be able to do that on interiors. I had to I had to switch and decided at that point. I think I did um, I think I did that, and I did a project with Grant Morrison called uh, Seven Soldiers with Zatan, and we did four issues of that. And right around that time, I did the covers for that book. And right around that time, I said I'm gonna I want to focus more on doing the covers only. It's gonna give me some more time to understand how and why I'm drawing what I'm drawing, master the craft a little bit more. And then later on down the road, I can bring it back into doing interiors, which I really love to do. But I wanted to do them on a level that was, uh, I, didn't, I didn't feel like when it came out that, I, uh, that it was lacking, you know? Well, your most recent work, um, this not, may not mean much to you, but I think the <clears throat> art collectors, especially the, uh, the veteran art collectors will understand. Um, you know, there, you did a recent uh, eight-page Wonder Woman story for Wonder Woman Black, White, and Gold anthology, which is sort of like Batman Black and White, but for Wonder Woman. Yeah. And uh, you did eight-page interiors and just a knockout. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. No, oh, thanks. So, uh, you know, no less a connoisseur than Albert Moy, you know, who is the premier not just a premier dealer in our hobby but the premier collector um yeah. you know he wrote me to me like this is beautiful you know this is this is amazing oh that's uh, awesome to hear <laughs> yeah, I, I i feel like uh you are hitting your stride with interiors now you know all the work you put in on the covers and to master the craft it's it's uh, coming to fruition well, you know, that's a, uh, like I said, that, <clears throat> and I got the chance to work with a good friend of mine too on that, on that story, John Arcudi, who wrote that job. He has a, an ability to write into comics, even, even a superhero, a superheroine like uh, uh, Wonder Woman. And John can write a story that, 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 that expands into something far more universal and far more relatable uh, to an audience, I think, than, than, um, than some other writers can. I, I always adore the chance to work with him. And he, when he wrote that story, man, it was, it was, uh, I just wanted it to be something special. I, I knew it had to be something special. When I got the script, he's such a good writer. It was such a great project. I was, I was kind of glad to see that they decided to take what so many of us artists who love 
just line art, black and white comics and stuff, which you just don't hardly ever see anymore, but was pretty common when I was a kid. There was a lot of black and white comics and a lot of um, really popular independent black and white comics. I mean, Ninja Turtles to, anyway, across the board, you had all kinds of stuff. You don't really see it that much anymore. When Chiarello sort of made the initiative to do Batman black and white, I was really happy they decided to do it with other characters. And so that Wonder Woman job was, it was just a lot of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. For the audience, uh, those of you who are in the chat, you go to my site, FelixComicArt.com, go to Ryan Sook's page, uh, and you can see all the scans. You can see all the art. Just go to the, scroll to the bottom, all the arts um, uh, 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 in order of uh, the, the title name. So look for Wonder Woman, Black, White, and Gold, and you'll, you'll get to see all the art. Um, yeah. Check it all out. Cool. Yeah, that was a fun. That was a fun assignment. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed that one. I'm glad. I'm glad people enjoyed looking at. It, you know, I actually got to do a Batman Black and White uh, ages and ages ago with Ed Brubaker of all things, and um, I look back at that and wish I had better chops at the time. But that that's another one that was a real privilege to get to do. And uh, Ed, something that that. It's probably not known by a whole lot of people, but uh, Ed Brubaker, before he became the huge image crime giant that he is now, uh, right as he was going into that, he and I and Mick Gray as the inker were hired to do detective comics uh, for DC. And we we drew an, we did an entire issue of it that's never gonna see print. Um, but it was it was so much fun. I, I still look back at that and I just think, man, Ed really wrote some great stuff there. There were some pages in there I was really I still am really uh, pleased about. And, um, you know, it, it, it makes me wonder what would have happened if, if we'd have gotten the chance to put out those issues. What would have happened? But uh, I had a really good time doing that. Sometimes you get a job and it's just a it's just a cool thing. But it's fun to have some of those weird rare pieces of art that are obscure. I just saw recently on uh, comic art fans, uh, a uh, Frank Robbins Batman story that was never published. And it's just astonishingly good. Frank Robbins, another big fan. I'm, anyways, another big hero, but uh, you know, I love finding stuff like that. It's almost makes it even more fantastic when you see it 20 years later or 30 years later and you go, why didn't this ever get published? It's so, so great that yeah hey you well why wasn't the fruit baker uh, story published um you know there was a falling out between ed and the editor at, at the of the project at the time and i think they were they had a, like a really tight relationship up until that point but on that project i don't know what their personal relationship is i never knew either of them really very well but uh, they had a falling out over the project mm -hmm. and because they did Mick and I were already in the middle of drawing that, that first issue, but, but I guess they, we found out online that we were being replaced. <laughs> they never did, the editor never did call us and let us know that we weren't going to be doing anymore, but uh, we found out that we've been replaced, but they had a falling out. And I think it, uh, Ed wanted to take Batman in the direction that the editor didn't want to at the time. He was going to, I think he was going to take it into some of that really fantastic almost gritty crime uh, material that Ed writes, which I personally think would have been fantastic. You're gonna make, yeah. you're gonna make Lambo cry. I mean, I think- I'm yeah. telling you, man, that issue had, it had Solomon Grundy in it. It had a new villain in it. It had all kinds of fun stuff in it, you know? But, but uh, anyway, yeah, fun they, stuff. They blew it. They blew it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, you, you talked about uh, Arkham Asylum, uh, Living Hell earlier. Uh, yeah. I think I think there's another piece uh, from Lambo's oh. collection. Maybe he can. Yeah, I hope this will translate well because I'm. But let's see here. All right, Lambert got the cover. Woo. Yeah, I had to fight the hordes. Yeah, on the first comic art drop. Well, thank you for thank you for uh, getting that. I'm glad to know where it is. I I wish uh, people could see the detail and just the complexity of this piece. And it weighs a ton, by the way. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's on masonite. <laughs> yeah. So you, people can see how thick it is. Yeah. That's, that's on, yeah, that's on masonite, which is I I stole that whole idea from. Uh, <clears throat> I stole that whole idea of painting on masonite from Frank Frazetta. So. I, you know, I, I'd never thought of such a thing until I found out he did some of his great Conan covers on uh, Masonite. And, um, and then I decided that was a great, uh, a great medium to work on. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he knew a thing or two. Yeah. You know, I got to meet him in person the one time that he was at San Diego. Uh, the year, the only year he attended San Diego Comic Con, Frank Frazetta, I, uh, was my first year attending. And I met him about 15 minutes in the door. And we walked in and they had this great, you know, kind of gallery area set up of a bunch of his originals, which I had never seen before. And I walked in with my friend, same guy, Tim Goodyear. And we walked in and we were looking at him. And I was just, I was drooling. I was literally like stunned. I couldn't believe how beautiful his originals are, you know, by comparison to print because there's just so much that you can see in original art that you just can't see in a print as good as prints are, you know, to see original artwork and his paintings and stuff, they were just mind blowing. And uh, I was just like, you know, I was nerding out over these paintings and my friend goes, you think that's crazy. Look behind you. So I turned around, he was standing right there, you know, he's literally standing right behind <laughs> me and he was so nice. I mean, we, I ended up sitting, he invites us to sit at his table with him and we're sitting there talking to Frazetta about, you know, painting and stuff. And at the time I was scared of painting and I was scared of oil paint in particular and any kind of paint. And he said, he said, um, you know what I love about oil painting? He said, if it's not working for you, you can just take a rag and sort of wipe off the stuff that doesn't work. And he said, in half the time, you'll end up with something better than you intended in the first place. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so he was dropping these weird little fun kind of bits of wisdom, but they actually made it a real impact. And uh, so that he, he's just a, a huge influence. And uh, I still every once in a while have a great desire to break out the paints and just paint something once in a while. So that, that painting was a rare uh, exception where, you know, an art director, Mark Chiarello, would allow me to to do a painting instead of a traditional comic art cover. And yeah, it was fun. Well, we're, I think, we're uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it had to be a good, it had to be a good cover because on the original series, Eric Powell was the painter of the covers and he did great paintings on those original issues. And I was, I remember at, at first I was kind of like bummed. I didn't get to do the covers. I was like, oh man, I was hoping I'd get the chance to do the covers, you know? And they're like, we got Eric Powell. And they sent me an image and I was like, okay, <laughs> forget. That's great. Let's just, I'll just draw the interiors, you know? Be, be honest, Ryan. Did you want to, uh, did you want to one up uh, Eric Powell? On Absolutely. That, that was the goal when I painted that thing. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't think I succeeded, but I really wanted to because Eric, you know, that's a hard, that's a hard one to, Follow. I'm a huge Eric Powell fan, and uh, I will say you succeeded. What? <laughs> He's great, man. I mean, um, in fact, I got to draw the goon too. Uh, I did. I, think, I can't remember if that that was printed in black and white as well. Yeah, Eric. Uh, he did a an anthology with a bunch of short stories, and I got to draw the goon as well. And that was another really fun thing. That's a you know, he's one of those guys. There's there's a few guys in the last several decades who have created characters that just, you know, are such great comic characters and uh, unrelated to, you know, any of 75 years plus worth of, you know, history, like most of our superheroes and characters and stuff. To have a character like the goon, that's a real mark of a great creator like Eric Powell, not to mention the the, the quality of his paintings and, and stuff that he's amazing. Okay, well, listen, I'm going to interrupt for just a second. So uh, for the Ryan Otley and the Ryan Stegman panel, we had a claim sale portion where they created sketches just for this event uh, to make them available for fans as fun. Uh, we tried to do that with uh, you, Ryan, and I really appreciate that. You know, I know, look, so and just so audience knows, Ryan is in the middle of a house move uh, and he's got deadlines. And so anyway, he's not able to uh, get sketches in time for the show. But uh, 
you know, again, in the spirit of Comic Art Live, uh, and this is, uh, you know, an online convention, we're going to open up a small sketch list, very small, just three spots, okay? Now, don't, please don't claim anything yet. Uh, Bill's going to come on, and we're going to show you the examples of what these sketches are like. Bill, can you hear me? When you're ready, uh, just let me know. Um, and then uh, you'll just shoot me an email. Um, hey, Bill, so I think, Bill, can you just show the examples and did the first, you know, then nobody email me yet uh, because I'm going to give the details and the pricing and so forth. And you can email me afterward. OK, but Bill, uh, you want to show the Batman bust? Well, I, I hate to tell you, I actually put the all the commission details on those, uh, okay, on those that's images. Fine. That's fine. Let's do it. Just show the bust and it's it's all good. But it has the lot number and everything on it, so people would actually be able to to claim it if we show it. It's okay. You know what? It's going to be. It's it's. It, it, I, I, I'll figure. Uh, okay. Tell you what. Let's let's do it by lot number. Okay. Show lot one, and uh, you'll see the price. You'll see what this looks like. This is a six by nine bust example. It's one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, you can't really tell from that image, but it is. You know, it's it's gorgeous. Super detailed. Uh, beautiful little piece, um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's lot number one. It's uh, yep. Just uh, email me if you if you if you like that. Yeah, okay. it's and it's been claimed. I was gonna say, and we've heard a heard a ping already, so I, I assume that that might happen. Okay. Uh, so, so, um, hang on a second. Let me let me reply. To that. And yeah, just like the other uh, two uh, panels before this, the first one to get their claim request in is the one that gets it. If you don't get a reply back from Felix, you didn't get it. And uh, we apologize, but these spaces and opportunities are very limited. And Ryan, thanks so much for doing these too. It, it means it means a lot to me too, because it just adds a, a la layer of fun to the show that just makes every one of these a little bit better than the last one. So I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, so Ryan doesn't do any commissions or sketches normally uh this is a real rare opportunity like i uh, you, you know there i was after ryan for a while to, to do commissions and he's just that's, i don't know it's, I, I at least 10 years ago you know and he hasn't had an opportunity this is this is kind of a rare thing so congrats to people who get it uh, you want to show lot two i will okay so this is a half body example um the other one was a bust it's a half body so you get a little more detail on it six by nine Price is two fifty. Uh, yeah, just email me lot two if that's something you'd like. And if nobody does, I will do it. Yeah, this is way more than um, than, uh, and it's gone. <laughs> I knew that one. once again. Yes. Yeah, you only hear one ding, but there's a whole bunch of them that come in come in all at once. Yeah, we got like six of them, but yeah, actually, uh, I'll just say it's. Uh, it's Colin Solon, uh, your pal, wow. Colin Solon. Yeah, the ed editor on Comic Art Fans. Congratulations yeah. to Colin. That's great. Thanks, man. Colin. <laughs> All right. And, he, uh, he has no leg up on anybody at the show. Everybody. <laughs> oh, you're okay. <laughs> you <know that. laughs> and, and, and Lambert showed that uh, that that beautiful uh, Batman painting for Arkham Asylum series. Uh, that was sold at uh, this past summer San Diego Felix Con, and he was there. He claimed it. It's in. You know, it's in the admin. I mean, Bill can confirm. Lambert was mm -hmm. was first. That's why you got it. There you go. I can. Uh, so you want me to show the final one? Let's do the final one. It is another half body example, just to show you a little different one. It's Hellboy. Uh, you know, but you can pick whatever character you want anyway. But just to give you an idea of what it looks like, this is two fifty. I actually sold this one on the site for three hundred, and it's gone. Uh, you know, I actually sold this at a drop for 300. So, you know, anyway, that's and it, I think <laughs> the guy I sold it to, I just saw it on, uh, on Comic Art Live. Oh, boy, look, I got like about 20 claims. So I'll pop in. <laughs> sorry. Uh, already been already been claimed, guys. Yeah. Uh, sorry, everybody. So, yeah, all all three. Uh, everyone <laughs> hang on. So all three spots are gone. I'm going to talk to uh, Ryan after the show. If we can squeeze in a couple more. Uh, we will, but you know, the guy, the guy's definitely busy, but you know, we'll try. Okay. But definitely for sure. The, the three people who claimed you guys got it. It's just, oh man, it's my inbox getting flooded. And you, you did email the first one for both th all three, right? So they all, I they're, did. they're good. Awesome. I did. Okay. All right. Well, congratulations, Ryan. I mean, you got a little extra work to do even in the midst of your move. <laughs> yeah. That, no, that's good. That's good. I love it. Um, 
Well, I'm I'm happy to do them. That's it's uh it's cool. I I, I do miss that part of conventions. You know, it's been it's been a long sure. time. And that's always been the best part of doing com- stuff at conventions, getting to meet people and do some sketches for them and stuff like that. It's really cool. Well, I, I, I agree. I mean, who, you know, I don't know where we're going to take the show as, as in-person cons come back. I mean, I'm sure we're going to continue to do them, but nothing beats being able to, you know, talk in person and, and maybe get to see the artist actually work on that piece that you're going to get at the, at the end of the thing. That's, it makes it, it's special. I mean, we're, I always felt like comic art live was kind of just filling the void until shows came back. But, um, but because nothing does really replace that interaction, that FaceTime w- with the creator. So that, that, you know, again, that's why it's great to at least be able to have these opportunities like like this today uh, has really made the last 18 months be, be bearable. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I think everything you guys have been doing on Comic Art Fans <clears throat> for years, for years, this is one of the coolest things. I mean, I, I, I think I found myself to be an instant addict as soon as I found <laughs> Comic Art Fans. Uh, in fact, I just did a... Um, Commission one commission that Felix set up for uh, Carol Day, and I, I what I didn't ever say, but uh, you know, I wish I had some great story about being a Carol Day fan since I was young, or I had read the script, you know, strip, or and not true. I I never. Oh uh, yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. I had I had never seen uh, or heard of David Wright until Comic Art Fans, probably about. Oh, I don't know, eight or 10 years ago, maybe now or something like that. Somebody had a strip on there and it was just a little window over on the side and I clicked on it and wow, you know, what a great artist. Yeah, what an incredible, great. great artist, you know, so it's a chance to work with something like that was really fun. But uh, that that's the, that's the thing I love about comic art fans. You get to see, you get to see work in a, in a state that that's wholly unique and, you get exposed to a whole bunch of great stuff. I, I love the site. Well, I, I appreciate that. It's almost uh, what'll be 19 years old in February. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Very, very, very long project for me, but I, I love it. You know, <laughs> did you ever felt like work once? <laughs> no, oh, no, oh, no way. I, I did it for fun. You know, I was a collector. I just wanted to see other people's collections, really. I mean, that was why I built it. Back in the day, we only had one site that allowed everybody to post only five pieces of art. And so a show would happen and you know, all these convention sketches are getting picked up and nobody would share a convention sketch on that site. Cause they only wanted to show their five best pieces or maybe their five pieces they were trying to sell. So you right. never get to see any of these really great things and you know, like, forget it. You know, I was a web developer. We had our own servers. We had the space. I'm like, I'm going to build a site just so we can all see what everybody's getting and let's see if it works. And yeah, it worked really well. So uh, right. we have over a million pieces of art on the site today. So that's, it's impressive. Incredible. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's incredible. That's great. So, uh, like I said earlier, uh, I, you know, Brian's been with us for two years. We have not, we, we've never taken a commission list or a sketch list. So that was a rare opportunity. Uh, but we did take one commission request because it was kind of a, a special case. And it was for this Carol Day that Ryan was talking about. There, um, There's a group of collectors who are uh, going to be uh, publishing an artist edition uh, style book devoted to Carol Day. And so they've commissioned uh, artists for pinups and and uh, new art to uh, include as a supplemental material, sort of pay homage to the artist David Wright, pay homage to Strip. And look at what Ryan Sook did. I mean, this thing is remarkable. This is, it's, it's he's, uh, you know, he's directly referencing uh, right style, but at the same time, you know, doing his own thing here. And, I, I, you know, I don't know if, how closely you guys can see, but, I mean, it's just gorgeous, you know, and all hand lettered. I mean, this, this thing is remarkable. Um, and, yeah, so this this will be a published piece. Um, you know, it's, again, we, did, we didn't take a commission list per se, but uh, when we were presented with this opportunity, um, you know, uh, Ryan was interested, so we did it, and I think the results speak for themselves. An absolute home run. Agreed. Yes. Yeah, that was a really fun thing. It's was, it was kind of like the uh, – I don't follow everything, so but I, I know about the uh, – it was kind of like the Dark Knight Returns Commission project with, with the pages and stuff like that. 
and to get in on doing something like that was was really cool. That's another one of those, you know, childhood impact things. You know, when you see something like the Dark Knight Returns coming, and they actually had that on the spinner rack at the Seven Eleven. You know, by my house, Dark Knight Returns, the original uh, books and stuff like that. And I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think back about it, and I think how strange and different and odd it was. But I couldn't afford it. But my friend across the street bought the issues and I'd just go over there and we would just, I mean, you were huffing the ink smell of those. It was just, you, you, you fell in love with that. So sometimes those commission opportunities come up and you just kind of, you just got to do what you got to do. Sometimes, you know? All right. So, uh, you know, like I do the uh, unboxing show on my YouTube channel. Um, I open up all the boxes of art with the audience. We get to check it out for the first time. Uh, you sent me a box of art. Uh, that uh, I'm, I didn't say for the YouTube channel because I wanted to show people here some of this stuff. So I'm just going to go through some of these pieces. Okay, Ryan? Of course. Uh, you, we talked about Stuart Eminem earlier. I mean, you know, you and Stuart are sort of the two, you know, elder statesmen, you know, master draftsmen of our group. And and here you go. You you did a cover for his uh, new comic, Magic Order 2. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another one of those cases of where you've got to try and really uh, put your best foot forward. I mean, Mark Miller and uh, Stuart Eminem, I mean, I, I've seen the issues and I saw I've got the privilege of seeing the line art. And Stuart is he's he's so good, you know, that uh, if you're going to do a cover for for a book with his work in it, it's got to be a heck of a cover. You know, you got to put put something into it. So I tried my best anyway. <laughs> He's a, he's so good. It's great. And this is uh, uh, House of Slaughter, which is a uh, something is killing the children spinoff, a very popular new series. That's right. So yeah. a lot, lot, lot of fans and collectors of this. So uh, I mentioned earlier in the Ryan Stegman panel that we are gearing up for an all cover drop probably in December. So you're going to see a lot of these uh, there too. Uh, this is. Uh, oh, cool cover for a new series from Boom called, uh, I think, uh, something to do with uh, Oswald's body. I yeah, think. Matter Regarding Oswald's Body, yeah. And written by an Oscar-winning writer, I believe, and he, he um, it's about a conspiracy around surrounding uh, Lee Harvey Oswald's body, uh, and uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. And the artwork in the interiors is fantastic. And, of course, your current project is uh, Blue and Gold, featuring... Yeah. Uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, you know, two Justice League favorites. Uh, here is the number five cover. Yeah, I'm going to go through this a little quicker, guys, because uh, try to keep my eye on the clock. Uh, here is uh, cover for issue six, and you even have a hand lettered logo there. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> here is uh, issue seven. Yeah. And I also have the interiors to uh, Blue and Gold number four. And the cool thing about this issue is you did uh, you did half the issue and the other half is done by uh, Kevin McGuire, original, you know, uh, Booster Gold Blue Beetle wow. artist from Justice League. So yeah. I'm gonna show the first page, I, don't, I, I won't show the other, spoil the other pages, but uh, that'll be a very, very cool issue. Very, very cool art. Um, that first issue of, uh, Blue and gold sold complete. Uh, we broke up the second issue. I think most of those pages are gone. I think there was a fill in for the third, right? And then now you're you're back with uh, the fourth uh, with Kevin McGuire. I don't have Kevin McGuire's pages, but that'll be a fun issue to get off the stands anyway. If I had the Kevin McGuire pages, you I would I would have to tuck those away anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, actually, and Dan Jurgens did a little sequence in there too, and they they both got to go off. It's it's a really it's a really cool issue, uh, and I got to color both of them too. So I got to color Kevin's work on that, and uh, as well as Dan's, and they're they're just awesome. It looks cool. Uh, yeah, I just want to show off one uh, one of my pieces of your art. This is one of my favorites. This is the <coughs> I was I was dying to get this art when I saw it. So, you know, uh, I've heard Alex Toth described as a master without a masterpiece which uh, maybe sounds like a knock, but it really isn't. I mean, the guy is hugely influential, one of the most important artists ever in the medium, but he just never had like a, you know, a single career defining work. Uh, 
you know, and you said earlier, like you think you're you're hitting your stride now. Your best is yet to come. So I think, uh, you know, that's that's exciting times for us. But to me, this is uh, this comes close. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wow. this is your 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 commandy uh, art from uh, Wednesday Comics. You mentioned Mark Chiarello earlier. I think that guy, like Scott Doombeer, just came up with like the coolest stuff. And so this uh, this project sort of mimics. Uh, uh, you know, old time Sunday comics. It was even published in sort of that newspaper format originally, but they collected it um, in a hardcover. And if anybody can find that, get it. But the, the like my favorite story in it, which is saying something because all the artists just did knock out work is uh, Ryan Sook and Dave Gibbons take on Commandy, which, uh, you know, pays homage to Jack Kirby, but also to me, like, like a Hal Foster, you know, really taking advantage of that giant format. So I just love this thing. Uh, so happy to get it. Um, yeah, so this is my, my Ryan Sukar. I'll show you. No, that was my favorite page of the whole thing, Felix. <laughs> no, you, don't you don't have to say that, Ryan. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I had, I had a lot of fun doing that. Of course, yeah, Dave <clears throat> Gibbons really wanted a Hal Foster feel for the, 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 the approach since we were doing it in that oversized Sunday full page funnies uh, format. But I, but I have to say, for me personally, it was it was really uh, Frazetta and Frank Robbins who really kind of influenced my approach to drawing those pages. Which I don't know may may seem odd, but if you look at those pages, it's kind of a it's kind of a conglomeration of their their influences on on me to to draw those pages. But uh, yeah, that was a really a special uh, job. And and out of all the jobs I've done over the years, I probably get more. Um, inquiry and, and discussion about that than than almost anything else I've ever done. It was really fun. Uh, okay, I'm going to run through some questions real quick from the chat, okay? Ryan, no. in the audience, so this, one's, this one's a little uh, uh, a little off the wall, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. It's from Jeffrey Chang. Just curious if Ryan is half Korean from his last name, Suk. No. Uh, no, it, it's actually a, an abbreviated form of a I always thought it was German. Somebody a year or two ago sent me an Ancestry.com thing says I'm Scottish. I don't know, uh, <laughs> but I but we I I'm pretty sure it, it's pronounced Zok originally, and and it was abbreviated from something like von Zok and something like that. You know, I, it's not Korean though. No. Uh, this is a question from Yo Curry. What is your big two dream project? Would you ever want to write and draw a creator-owned book? So two questions. Same, same answer, yes. Uh, that, that's really what I would like to do. I'd love to do something that I could write and draw and, um, and do a make it a creator-owned book. I, that, that would probably be my dream project, yeah, to be able to do something that I created and have it be, um, have it be yeah, that would be great. I'd love to chance to do it. Do you have a big two dream project? A big two dream project. Yeah, I've got one tucked in my back pocket. I'm trying to kind of. No, I I drew a thing. I I I drew a thing years ago, a splash page, a uh, 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 production image for something I wanted to do, and I had it with me at a convention. And what it is was uh, the Justice League as like um, the Outsiders, a street game. Kind of like take the Warriors or or something, and and I had you know Clark in the leather jacket with the S on his thing, and uh, and um, Wonder Woman had the pink satin jacket with a WW on it, and I, the whole crew. I had the whole thing, and I was sitting at this convention, and these two greasers. They were. I'm I'm not saying that in a, a negative way. They were literally greasers. They had the hair, the leather jackets, the T-shirts, everything. They were all. They walked up and they were looking at my stuff, and I said, "I gotta show you something." And I showed them the the, the pinup that I had drawn, and they were like, <laughs> "And uh, I would love to do that. I, I'd love to do that." That sounds like a black label. I mean, yeah, black yeah, label. I'd love to do something like that. I I would really like to do. Um, yeah, I'd love to do something where you can take those characters and do something that hasn't been done with them before, and and make it uh, really look at those characters you know because i mean you think about clark being the alien right and uh diana's a foreigner and and bruce is a orphan and you, you stick them together in a you know in a little street gang 
And I just, I've always loved the idea of that, especially if you could set it back in the day and have hot rods in it and stuff like that. It'd be great. All right. Uh, I think we got time for one more question. It's, it's kind of tied into the last one from Sammy Rojas. Is there a medium or property Ryan would like to work in? He hasn't had the chance to maybe movie posters. Um, yeah. I'd love to do all of them. I, 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 I really would like to do all of that kind of stuff. In fact, uh, I have had the chance to do almost everything uh, with, the, with the exception of a movie poster. I've been able to illustrate books and do book covers and uh, magazine and editorial ads and, and graphic design and company logos and all of that stuff, most of which will never get seen or go unrecognized. But I, I love to do all that stuff. And yeah, a movie poster would be great. I'm a fan of movie posters, um, especially really good ones. And yep. uh, yeah, it'd be great. All right, uh, Lambo, you got anything? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I think we're, we're coming up toward the end of it. You know, we were gonna save the uh, claim part for the end, but Bill has to jump to his next panel. Uh, wow, what a marathon section for me, back to back to back. And it was, it was a piece of cake, really. Uh, you know, thanks to you guys. Uh, so I'll just close all of this by saying thank you to all the Ryans. So we had the we had the Ryan hat trick today, the Ryan trilogy. You guys are awesome. Uh, thanks for doing the sketches, Ryan Souk. You sure. know, so we have a little something for those who tuned in. Uh, I will get to everyone today. I promise. I got to take my daughter to a school thing, so I'll answer everyone's emails when I get back. But I think I already replied to all three who won. Um, and I, I think that's it. And Bill, uh, as always, you know, thanks for putting this on. It's, it's, you know, I, I know, I know collectors just really look forward to this weekend, love this weekend and uh, glad we could do something with you. That was my pleasure guys. Thank you so much. And Ryan, yeah, thanks. Thanks again. Hope to see you at a show soon. Definitely. Thank all three of you and everybody who came and uh, tuned in. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right. Take care everybody. I'll be in the next panel with uh, Weems and Golly. So all right. take care. All right, hey Ryan, I'll, I'll call you. I'll call you. Later.